Metro, I don't trust you. I'm gonna shoot you. Beautiful morning. Get the sun in my morning. Uh, here's something interesting, right? Has this ever happened to you? Who is clicking? Not me. <laughs> right. What are you clicking, bro? No, I was just, I was just uh, closing the tabs. Okay, here yeah, I go. Yeah, see, this you gotta edit all of that. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Sorry. Have you guys, all of, all of you guys use Snapchat, right? Yeah. Uh, so, let's say you're looking at, you're trying to take a selfie with the Snapchat filter on. Mm -hmm. And then you're switching through filters, right? And then there's can't this, relate. You can't relate. Okay. There's, <laughs> there's this microsecond where when you're moving from one filter to the next, where it shows you your real face right in the middle. <laughs> and then you're like, oh my God, why isn't the texture of my face so bad compared to the filter? Which is obviously stupid, right? Because it's, it's a filter. Yeah, just some thoughts I had yesterday. I don't so know where you're going. With what's this. the point of uh, saying is that you're enhancing a beauty with filters? Then I don't know. Well, it smooths it smooths your features out, I guess. Yeah. Which makes people think it looks better, but no. <laughs> yeah, and it makes me think like you know, women go through a lot of pressures to look like. Those, fi those filters, you know. I don't think it's it's, it's not yeah. only women; it's also the men does filters too, bro. So, yeah, well, guy, no. I think guys put a lot of filters, like even you can see it, like uh, Instagram or something. So, yeah, when you when you edit a post, also you put filter, right? Don't put a natural picture. So, where do you think that comes from? The need, the need to put filters on yourself, insecurities. Insecurities. I feel I feel it's more like okay, I think it's it's more like creativity too. Like think about it, like you edit the pictures, right? And then it's like a, a photographer role of your own photographer role, like an Instagram. So you take a picture and you edit it and then it becomes like wow, I can edit pictures, you know. <laughs> yeah, I could I could scroll through a list of filters and choose one, yeah. That's great. No, I was watching this uh, documentary for a class, for a sociology class. It's called The Illusionist. And it's talking about how these beauty, these cosmetic industries, mm -hmm. I mean, they're basically businesses, right? Their goal is profit. And they yeah. have to they have to create, they have to sell the, the illusion, I guess, that you're not perfect and that you have flaws. And then sell your product that apparently you know fixes those flaws and these industries like way back when would create these fake flaws for people and sell them products based on those fake flaws and a lot of that was targeted to women and right now you're seeing a lot of it shifting towards men like more emphasis on men's health on men's health but men's beauty men's facial care which is i think so much less so for men than for women right yeah yeah, just just because of societal pressure, I I don't think uh, just marketing on its own can change that. It it depends. It depends where your um, goal is at. Like, if you try to focus on beauty and if you try to focus on like how much you look, like how much you like want to look good, the more you focus on that, the more you figure that shit. I'm fucked up myself. So. <laughs> what? like like think about it like you know uh if you focus emphasize on things that uh that's you feel like it's affecting you then you will be more concerned about it so in case of beauty like you think you're not good looking you're not um like beautiful or something and you focus more on that you tend to be try to more you know getting judge judgmental on yourself or like how others look on to you. Yeah, but then you're asking yourself, you, I'm not good looking enough based on what standards, based on standards that these industries are creating, you know, through their fashion magazines, through- Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's so like, if you remove the, if you remove the thought process from there and think that freely, then you would think you're beautiful yourself. You don't need to 
makeup industry to define how beautiful you are. So yeah, well, that's another side of it. Right now, we're seeing a lot of movement against that, right? With like body positivity and all that stuff. Accept who you are. But yeah, yeah. man, these industries are crazy. Can you guess? I want each of you to guess which country has the most plastic surgeries. No, United Google. States. No. I think South America. No. It's fucking Lebanon. One in three women in Lebanon get plastic surgery. Well, you're, you're asking for the most, not the highest rate. What? Well, if you're asking in sheer numbers of volume, it's probably the United States. If you're asking for rate, maybe it's Lebanon. No, it's Lebanon. If you're asking it's as a Lebanon. percentage of population. Oh, even in terms of numbers. Okay, okay. You just did the scientific <laughs> process on me. And I think that's a good chance to introduce you because we haven't introduced you yet. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm going to call it right now the next... Nobel Prize winner in physics is sitting right here. Uh, Ashutosh Budhia, my longtime high school friend, uh, currently studying theoretical physics in UBC. Just physics. Yeah. Okay, just physics. One of the smartest yeah. people I know. <laughs> uh, one of the top achievers in our school. Did you ever feel a kind of pressure for being at that level? Oh, well, yeah, but it became part of life. Uh, so you just learned to deal with it? Um, I, w I wouldn't say you, you learn to deal with things. You just develop sort of ways to cope with it. That's literally My learning to, to deal with it. With it. <laughs> was, was physics... <laughs> My way to cope with it was to sort of ignore sort of all the things that happened in the past, just focus on the next goal. No, if you find yourself sort of resting on the things you did in the past, uh, you sort of have to reevaluate uh, what you're doing. I think in my opinion, at least. Okay. Yeah, Tom, and you're gonna say something? Uh, I was saying like, yeah. was physics your more like a like when you started studying about it, was it more like a passion or more like a you know pressure, like from school and society or something, like, or from parents? Oh, passion! It was it was actually the opposite in terms of pressure, where people would just pull me aside and say, "Hey, man, what are you gonna do with physics? You know, are you gonna teach for the rest of your life or whatever? You know?" Yeah. Uh, I guess it's just this misconception. Um, you know, wherever we came from, that. That's all there is to do with physics, but you know, there's there's much broader horizons that you know people may may not consider in terms of tech development or just mm -hmm. diversifying into any fields. So nice. yeah, well, that's sort of how it came to it. Could be the next Tony Stark. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, <laughs> unrealistic standards. Unrealistic body standards for physicists. That's, that's for that. Body standards? <laughs> for they, physicists. They yeah. would fit in the suit? No, that's a joke anyway, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, otherwise, how has uh, COVID been impacting you, Ashutosh? Uh, just overall laziness. I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm normally an active person. I like to think, uh, but you know, COVID sort of minimizes your sort of need or even just the necessity of using public transport, going downtown or going on a hiking trail where you're going to be meeting loads of other people. So mm -hmm. all of that gets cut down. Wait, but you can still hike though, right? Yeah, you can, but all the hiking trails near me are kind of populated. So when I do go, I sort of go at all times. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's an interesting thing we were talking about before, about 
I think both of us here have the experience of leaving our parents and coming to another country and kind of yeah. living life, I guess. And with that comes its own problems, its own benefits. Uh, let's focus on the problems. What do you think are some of the issues that people who move away deal with? I don't know. I, I wouldn't call them issues. It's just a new experience. And, you know, with all experiences, obviously, if you compare it to something that you had before, things are going to be different. But uh, personally, I don't think of it that way. I think, uh, you know, just new opportunities, new experiences, uh, you know, yeah, I guess it's all part of growing up or whatever. Was it hard for you personally? Or did you just like, fuck, I love this shit. <laughs> so much freedom. Yeah, there, there's, there's all of those elements. Obviously, you you know, you miss the company and sort of, I'd say, the convenience of staying at home. But yeah, you learn to, you know, you just get to accept uh, the situation that you're in and you make the best of it, you know. You're living with your friends, you're sort of in the prime of your life, so. Instead of focusing on what you left back home, just look forward. The prime of my life is getting fucked by Corona, man. Can't do shit. <laughs> not, that I was, not that I was doing a lot of shit anyway, but you know. But well, you, you can always you can always postpone the prime of your life. So. <laughs> yes, to the next prime. Um. Yeah, man. But like, if you were to give any advice to people, uh who are maybe thinking about moving away from their parents and they're kind of scared, yeah. what would you give them? I just say that there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. You know, it's at some point or another, you're going to have to face that eventuality and it's better you do it sooner rather than later. You learn to cope with certain problems yourself. You expose yourself to new experiences, new people new cultures, new countries, all of that. You know, uh, so I'd say that is this sort of that trepidation? It's like, uh, you know, staring, staring down at the pool when you're scared to jump off the diving board for the first time. But then once you do it, it's like, why was I scared? So yes, that was me. At, uh, that was me at Consolata, man. I could never jump off that high ass diving board. We were tiny, so to us that was that was like a hundred foot drop. <laughs> How long you know, was okay, no, go ahead. I would say like after a certain age you have to move from your parents so to self discover yourself and for who you are. And because if you well, it's not a necessity, yes, but yeah, uh, because, in this day and age it's, it's yeah, more likely yeah. that that's gonna happen. If you stay with your parents and, you know, you won't be able to um, understand who you are, you'll be like all taken care of and everything. But but if you're by yourself and you know, like if you face lots of situations in life, then you can face much more difficult situations when you're by yourself rather than with your parents. But it comes to in independence and sort of being prepared to deal with things on your own and I guess I, I don't approve of parenting cells where, you know, they shelter their kids from everything out there or try to yeah. control aspects of their lives. But uh, that's why I give good credit to my parents. They sort of sometimes just gave me my own problems. They deal with them. So mm -hmm. it, may f it may feel like tough luck during the time, but you look back on it and see that yeah, it was a learning experience. So yeah okay um other than that let's talk about time travel i <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't know much about time travel gotta be honest <laughs> dude that's not that's this this man cool. is into time travel like he likes um his Telepathy and stuff like that. <laughs> he likes doing that shit. <laughs> Doctor Strange. Well, I had the option of studying that this year, but I decided to go in a different direction. You have a time travel course? Is... 
Uh, no, it's it's part of uh, the course on general relativity, where at the end you get to review a bunch of papers, and uh, some of the papers are, you know, they they involve the possibility of time travel and so on. I mean, I, but I wouldn't like... think that to be, you know, very practicable. So I chose something which I thought was more interesting. Which I was... don't know. I heard I heard somewhere in Antarctica you can travel like. Two seconds backward or forward, something like that. Not um, sure how much of it is no, true. Uh, we we haven't found any process so far that allows, uh, you know, passage back in time. Is it's just not something that we found so far experimentally, at least. Is is sleeping time travel forward? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what if you sleep on a train? Then you're moving as well, you know. Space time travel, space time continuum movement. Sure, if the train is called space time. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't think that's realistic. So, what did you decide to focus on? No, I, I, w I didn't think it was practical. I didn't say it was realistic. So in terms of practical, I mean, it's dealing with black holes, which we're unlikely to reach. But even then, I chose to focus on extracting energy from black holes. How would you do that? Mm. Uh, there's, there's many processes. Um, the most famous of which is uh, was formulated by Roger Penrose, who just won the Nobel Prize this year for his work on black holes. And when he was a postdoc student, he found that um, it's because of the way that the space-time geometry works over there. When you have a non-spinning black hole, you have the event horizon from which nothing can return. But if it's spinning, which most things in the universe do because angular momentum has to be conserved. So if something falls in that has angular momentum, that's conserved. So Black, spinning black holes must exist if you accept that black holes exist, which they do. Mm -hmm. So when it spins, it pulls itself in tighter. So these, uh, you have what would have been the event horizon if the black hole wasn't spinning, and what is the event horizon now because it is spinning. Now the, the region between that is called the ergosphere. And a crazy thing that happens there is that to someone who's far away, nothing in that region can be seen to stand still because space-time itself is spinning with the black hole. Mm. So an interesting property that in that region is that particles can have a negative energy as seen by someone who's far away from the black hole. So if you insert a particle into that region and it breaks into two, you can you can have it such that one of the particles attains negative energy and the other particle comes out of the black hole. So what it means is that the particle that came out of the black hole has more energy than the one that you put into there. Now this isn't as efficient as uh, a process called super radiance where instead you can fire electromagnetic waves at the black hole and the same thing happens but with photons and it's going to emit an electromagnetic wave with more energy than the one that you threw at it. Mm -hmm. So you can use that maybe by surrounding it by a mirror or something and you can use that to bounce uh, the light around in there and it's gonna grow exponentially in energy each time that it passes through the black hole and comes out of it and you can make a small opening to shine that light now or whatever these so are all theories right a couple of processes we found um i wouldn't say purely theory because they are physically possible i think you just need to put time and investment onto it like how to do but it. then if well, we... I, I think I think that's the least of our worries right now. The first of our worries is how we how are we gonna get to one of those things? So. Yeah, yeah, like it's so far away. Yeah, and crazy. you're realistically to to be able to 
<clears throat> have a situation you can control. You want to find one that's tiny. Mm -hmm. And that's hard to find, obviously, because of the scale of the universe. Super massive black hole. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those so things are scary. Fucking hell, man. Space <laughs> is scary. So what is negative energy? Uh, it's it's just sort of um, that's you, bro. Well, you could consider it in in terms of of in terms of potential, right? So, for instance, if you lift a weight and and carry it upwards, then you have a potential energy that's mm. positive. When you drop it, that potential energy, you know, goes to zero. But what you can do just because it's arbitrary, you say that at the top it has zero potential energy. So when the object falls, it develops a negative potential energy. Essentially what it means is that that energy is, is provided by the rotational energy of the black hole. So every time a particle is ejected, the black hole slows down just a bit in its rotation. Oh, okay. So given a long enough time frame, a black hole can yeah. from from a spinning black hole it can become a stationary black hole yeah it can become a stationary black hole at which point the only way that it can shed energy is uh to the through hawking radiation what what is that uh essentially um okay to an observer that's far away from the black hole at the interface so at at the event horizon of the black hole is the creation of virtual particles. And uh, what happens is that one of the particles can be pulled inward into the black hole while one of them escapes. Mm -hmm. Okay. At which point we consider them to become real particles. So for for the for you know every part every particle that is that escapes the black hole, the that black hole is losing Rest mass energy, mm -hmm. that energy. Yeah. Mm, but that process is very, very slow. And that, the particles that are uh, leaving the black hole, those are the ones that we observe using like our telescopes or whatever? No, those, those would likely be very difficult to observe. But what we do see in the instance of uh, the picture that, that we saw was released earlier last year is uh, the accretion disk is um, sort of light and matter that's that's caught spinning around the black hole and since it's accelerated uh, it sort of glows because of you know just the heat mm -hmm. and th that's what you observe is the accretion disk around the black hole. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you seen the video of the star that's spinning apparently around the black hole? Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, the, the is that the, the sort of binary system? I'm not sure, but it shows like a star like just going round and round. And it's like, yeah. apparently it's... Uh, like, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, and is that another proof of spinning black holes? Um... Well, you can't tell if it's spinning unless, you know, you really were to, I think, get better instrumentation to do that. But, uh, you know, like I say, just by the laws of physics, if you accept that black holes exist, then spinning black holes have to exist. It's just a property of physics. Let's go to, let's turn back the clock to the, to the birth of a black hole. So how is a black hole is formed by a star collapsing in on itself or something like that, right? Is that true? Yeah. Yep. You do you wanna like explain that process more to me? Uh yeah, so these different types of black holes that have been theorized. Uh one is primordial black holes, which uh, uh possibly were created during the time of the Big Bang. Uh, which would appear physically no different to a black hole that's formed from a stellar collapse. So essentially what happens is when a star is massive enough, 
when it's nearing the end of its life, um, you know, a, a star maintains itself through, so there's the gravitational pressure which, mm -hmm. you know, acts inwards to pull the star into itself. And then there's a the radiation pressure from uh, the, the, fu the fusion processes that are happening in the core of the star and sort of other parts of the star as well. So that's pushing outwards. And there comes a point where this, the, the fusion, the radiation pressure can no longer withstand the force of gravity, at which point there's an implosion, which results in a supernova and what, whatever remains of the star that's not, that's not been exploded, this accelerates to a single point. Mm -hmm. And how big is that point? Yeah. It's just a point. It's it's an infinitely small, tiny small. Point. It's just a point. Is, yeah, like it's just, just a singularity. Burst burst into a single point. Yeah. Wow. In, oh. in the case of a spinning black hole, it forms a ringularity. So that forms a ring. So a really yeah. infinitely thin oh. ring. And yeah. that's the yeah, that's the singularity that. that everyone says is inside a black hole. Yeah. Does that make sense? God damn. God damn. So you obviously believe in the Big Bang theory. Do you? Well, it's it's one of show. the best theories we have to explain. I don't think it's a matter of belief. It's a matter of looking at what theories are out there, and and seeing which has the best support uh, given the observations that we have and the other theories that we've developed. Okay. Now, can you explain the Big Bang Theory to me? That's not something I'm an expert on, so I'm <laughs> going to skip that. <laughs> okay. Well, I wouldn't say I'm an expert on black holes either, but there's something that I do know about that versus <laughs> I haven't studied cosmology. Okay, okay, no That's worries. Fine. Yeah. Uh, so, okay then. Then what do you think is... Okay, no, how do, how do I want to say this? S string theory, is, there, is, is it still being studied or have they kind of stopped that? Uh, it's, it continues to be a, a field of research in theoretical physics. Mm-hmm. Does it have potential? Although it's 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 still it's still a matter of contention as you know a valid theory or you know these these competing theories mm -hmm. about quantum gravity and how how to reconcile quantum mechanics and Einstein's theory of general relativity. But again, that's that's not another thing that I'm I'm really well versed in. So you told me that right now you're working on quantum mechanics. Is that true? You're cutting out. Say that again. Can you hear me? Yeah. So yeah, you, you told me right now you're actually working on something to do with quantum mechanics. Or you want to... Yeah, it's, it's something that, that, I'm, that I'm working towards. That's uh, something that I want to write my thesis on. So if that pans out, okay. uh, hopefully we can talk some more. That's awesome, man. Do you think you can reconcile those two things you just said? Are you the guy for the job, Ashutosh? Uh, for, for, for me, I, I, I don't think that's of interest to me personally. Leave that to better minds. So <clears throat> So there are, there are people trying to do that, eh? Hey? Yeah. Across the world, yeah. And if that, if they do do that, it'll change the way we think about everything. Uh, very likely, yes. Um, I'm not sure how it, it will it will change our, our daily lives, but then again, people thought, you know, that relativity wouldn't change our lives in any way, and that it was just a cool theoretical thing, and then. It turned out to be essential for GPS systems and so on. So you never know. Man, it's 
crazy. I, man, I just wanna. What you? I just wonder, like, if you can, if you can make uh, a discovery that just changes, just changes the way we look at the world. That'd be amazing, man. If, if anyone can do it, I, I mean, think it's you, bro. Yeah, well, th then again, you know, that's that's such, I guess, something that people aim to do. Well, I'm sure some people aim to do it, but don't you? You know, with most things, it's uh, you, you. You're sort of curious about something, and you follow it, and sometimes you end up being successful, and that's that's the part that everyone talks about. But mm -hmm. one of the most important parts of science is also following something and and figuring out that that was wrong. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that that lays, you know, essential groundwork in terms of what our current thinking is and where its limitations lie, or where we may have to change our thinking. That's true. That's true. You want to light, Nora? How tr how true is you know when you watched Avengers? How true is yeah. <laughs> when they spoke about like Bruce Banner and uh, Tony Stark when talking about quantum mechanics and stuff like that? Well, I'm sure they had script consultants, but then again, uh, you know, the main focus of this film isn't to be scientifically accurate. If it were, it would probably take, I don't know, five hours for them to finish their conversation. But. <laughs> I, either way, I think to just throw in enough stuff to keep the plot moving. That's that's their end goal. So I wouldn't fault them too much for being scientifically inaccurate. Yeah. I was... <clears throat> did you did you enjoy Endgame? I thought it was enjoyable. That's that's pretty much all I have to say. About it. <laughs> I'm I'm really sick of of all of this Cape Great Crusader stuff. Uh, it's actually been a relief this year that there hasn't been much of that. But on the other hand, there there haven't been many other movies either. So, <laughs> if we would yeah. re recommend one movie to watch this year, which one would it be? Good question. Let's come back to that at the end of the podcast. Okay. I'll well, keep thinking about it at the back of my head. Yeah. For, pe for people watching, Ashtosh's recommends are usually top notch. So, if that comes with music or movies or podcasts, yeah. I fucking love the Conan podcast, man. It's so hilarious. Cool. Yeah, it's so yeah. Yeah. I listen yeah, to he's, he's funny, yeah, but he's one kind of in a way. His, his, his brand of humor is, I think, unique and. He's he's one of the few people in in that circuit who's evolving very well with the audience and at the times and the technology. So I'm always really excited to see what he's doing. Yeah, he gives this air of genuinity, which if you look at someone like Fallon or Kimo, it doesn't seem like that. It seems like someone wrote these jokes for them and they're just repeating it. But with Conan, someone probably did. But the way he says it, it's like. It, you can think it's straight off his head. You know? I mean, Conan was a stand-up who was doing comedy before himself, and he came out the industry for doing podcast. So, mm -hmm. Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Oh, wasn't he? Uh, wasn't he? A, he was a writer on on The Simpsons and SNL and various shows, and then he became yeah. a late night host. Yeah. If you, if, yeah, you, he's really funny. if you had a talk show, what, what, what would it be about? Uh, well, first, I probably wouldn't have one. And second, if I did, <laughs> that, that would take a long time for me to think about. So, <laughs> But if, if I were to have my pick, it would probably be just absurd, absurd humor. So it, it would sort of be sort of like sketch shows. I, I really like what Monty Python did with, with just pure absurdity. So some something in that vein. Obviously, I wouldn't want to replicate what I've done. Ne ne neither would neither should anyone try to. But yeah, uh, that, that's that's I think 
one aspect of you, but that's that's not well explored today. Monty Python and the Holy Grail, man. Watching that at your place was so hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was, I think, the first I saw of Monty Python as well, and I I wasn't too sure whether I liked them. I thought it was just one of those overhyped pieces, but. The moment, the moment they chucked that cow out of the castle, <laughs> I lost it. That, that was it. That was a turning point for me. <laughs> Through a fucking cow, man, right? because it's like, what the fuck, right? Um, another movie which I really like, it's kind of like that, is Pink Panther. Because Pink Panther is like... Yeah. The human... Which one? The, the, the first one, or...? The one... Uh, I haven't watched it in so long, but it's like... Everyone is real, but then... Well, they have a couple of sequels. Yeah, bro. Uh, that, that, that I don't think I have seen, because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm watching the movies about the, the detective and, you know, the, the Pink Panther, the diamond, and so... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. I think Pink yeah. Panther is... Part 2 is coming along with Sonic, collaborating with, together next year. Pink something. Panther and Sonic? What's the relation there? I don't know, just the collaboration project. No, I Sonic. Don't know, man. These, 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 these are things people wrote in a boardroom. They're like, the kids will like this. <laughs> Fucking leave Sonic out of it. Man. Just leave Pink Panther. I don't know. Yeah. I like I like that tune, like the the background theme music. Turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and. Yeah. <laughs> What one of the best compositions I think for uh, a kids TV show? Yeah. Oh, kids TV shows. What was your kids TV show of choice back in the day? And I, I used to do. I used to watch it so much when Nation was it called Nation back then? NTV, whatever it was called back then. Uh, used to just air Cartoon Network for just hours at a stretch because they had no content of their own, or, or oh, whatever yeah. it was. <laughs> Yo, Cartoon Network, man. Yeah, so it, it was just everything that Cartoon Network had at that time. I think my favorite had to be Courage the Cowardly Dog. Courage the Cowardly Dog, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a black um, comedy, you know, like... Uh... <clears throat> It's funny. You know, I don't even remember much of it, but I do remember just quoting a lot of it. Dude, do you remember... Uh, stupid Di- dog, or... <laughs> do you remember Diary of a Wimpy Kid? <laughs> we used to love that. Uh, I, I, I never got those. I think the only reason I used to read those was to... I don't know, to sort of keep up with the hype or whatever. But I, I never really liked those at all. <laughs> Did you like uh, Goosebumps, though? I didn't like those either, no. Goosebumps. Goosebumps, I, I, I used to read books of it. The, the horror, horror books I used to read. Goosebumps, man. Uh, I like um, Halloween. Halloween, the yeah. movie? I don't, I, I don't think I ever found I them like particularly that. scary. I don't no, find them don't, particularly scary. It's more like a thriller and slasher thing. That's only Michael Myers, so like Halloween. I like type movies, you know. I just, I just like, I just like those movies is because they talk about like um, psychological effects. Like, why is he turned? Like in the first place, in the first part of the movie, when he, like, why did he kill his older sister? Like, like, what is the thought process of killing the older sister? So you what? Know, like, what is the intention? So, Mind Mind Hunter does a great job of that. Fucking phenomenal uh, series. You know? Yeah, I, yeah. They, they're one. discontinuing Which... it, by the way. There's, there's not going to be a season three. What? Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. It's pretty. It's pretty good show. That's like talk about so many things. Why the fuck? I don't. And, and that's that. strange. Just coming. Just coming. Just coming off the back of David Fincher's movie that he did for Netflix. I'm surprised they canceled the show. Yeah. Why did they cancel it though? I'm not sure. Maybe just uh, maybe the audience numbers just weren't high enough, or it just wasn't attracting enough people to Netflix. I don't know. You know, the other show that I like in terms of creativity is um, Black Mirror. 
Like Mary, yeah. I haven't watched much of that, but what I did see was, yeah, they have interesting concepts. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, this this one um, episode of virtual reality of <laughs> two guys playing a virtual reality game. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah up, I've seen that, bro. That's so messed up, man. Like they're playing like a Mortal Kombat kind of shit. Yeah, and then and then they start making falling in love in the game, and it's just you feel the real interaction with the guy and a guy like in person, but in the game it's like a girl and a boy. Yeah. Were those guys gay at the end? I think they were gay, right? I think so. They identified as gay, yeah. But it's it's kind of interesting how it came up to be. I think it shows the other parts that some people, like, when some people are, like, secretly, you know, they have these thoughts that are maybe, like, gay or something, but they don't know. So I think that's a plot over there it might bring out, too. Are you are you trying to tell us something, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> well, the world knows now. <laughs> Ashtosh, what are you thinking? I think I just zoned out. <laughs> so, what do you want to talk about, bro? I know, you tell me. You're the one running the podcast, dude. <laughs> well, I feel like your conversations work needs a bit of work bro some back and forth <laughs> all right then let's let's switch let's switch gear to this um i would say it's a major issue or a big contrivance but it's just one of those experiences that i guess uh you know people of a different ethnic origin have Sort of in, in a country that's not their, their native country, for instance, um, I'm, I'm a Kenyan person of Indian ethnicity, and uh, there's, there's always this sort of uh, feeling at the back of your head, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not, 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 not just, not, not least in part just because of sort of the, the social situation in Kenya as well. Don't get me wrong, I love the country and, and its people, and most of them are highly welcoming, but there are instances where you're reminded that you're an outsider, and that's sort of a feeling that carries over into different aspects where uh, sort of, I would say, people in a situation like ours uh, don't feel like they're home anywhere. Uh, I also get that feeling when I go back, uh, when I, you know, visit uh, family in India or something like that. There's this, uh, you know, massive cultural differences or, you know, just a language barrier that develops out of, you know, not interacting with a lot of people in a mother tongue or not being able to articulate yourself as well as you would in English or something like that. I wouldn't say it's a big issue or that it's it's been, you know, a, a major detractor to my life. I just thought that it's it's sort of an interesting it feeling is. that I'm, I'm, I'm interested in hearing about from, from other people who've had similar experiences. I, I have, oh, okay, Tom, you can go first. I think, like, okay, so it's, I would say, say it's two stages. When you were in, when you were in Kenya, like when I was in Dubai, or when you on that were you place, born in race there or i was born in kerala then i was raised in dubai so right. when you're there it's like everything is same and stuff like but when you move out to a different place and you come to india or dubai like or after four or five years there's a lot of love from people at the same time yeah you're right in most of the ways uh um, of course yeah there, there is yeah. a lot of love there's no but, malicious intention about it. It's just the way things end up. Yeah. Yeah. The way or the things re, things why I end up is this because people tend to think, oh yeah, he might have changed, so might have different approach towards talking to this person, you know, um, or maybe it might be like um, the the sense of feeling like. You know, um, things has evolved and, you know, people are changing and growing. So I don't think 
we can connect that much very well you know and so it feels like you're like a different person when you go to different place when you come back um yeah and i you think you can you become very conscious of sort of not fitting in i guess Some, it's, it's it's not yeah. it's not it's not an immediate sort of comfortable feel yeah like you don't sometimes you don't feel comfortable but one the is just that thought like i had a thought process for that you know i want to fit in and stuff but then i, I was like you know i don't give a shit about it <laughs> I'm like done with this crap. I wouldn't say it's 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 about the the feeling of wanting to fit in. It's just a, a slight you know a tinge of alienation. That, that's yeah. all I'm talking about. Yeah. I do um, I I too feel that like when I go back to India I'm very different in terms of like my values and like the stuff I do compared to my cousins. But then at the same time we just have fun anyway you know we just hang out we talk and if i'm there long enough eventually i get really comfortable with them and then it's fine so at the start definitely i understand what you're trying to say i feel like no oh, this guy is so different from me the stuff they do i wouldn't really do it like they're very religious and stuff uh but other than that they're just like normal people if they if you want to play cricket with them they'll be down for a good for a good time um yeah man yeah it yeah it comes down to opening up a dialogue you know there there's so many instances where you know for instance when 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 you're out, out alone in you know in 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 public mo- among the kenyan people you know sometimes you know you know well you know th- their first instinct is that you know uh you might not be one of them or, or something like that but when you take the opportunity to actually talk to them they realize and you realize that you know you you're not too different uh yeah. you know, i had that experience when i complained my dad to a voting line he was i don't know a few kilometers along so we we were just stuck out there and you know we we struck up conversations with the people around us we you know we we found that you know we we had similar aspirations for what we wanted for the country and for the leadership i had something similar like that when i went to get my <laughs> when i went for my driving test uh you know there were there were these guys having their in jokes and all of that and you know they they were sort of cold to me but then it came to the point where we sort of had to go get a photocopy of our ids and i pulled out my kenyan id and that they were surprised so we started talking in swahili we hit it off then at the end of the day we all just you know sitting at the back of a truck you know just just joking around laughing at one of the other guys who broke the transmission of a lorry or something <laughs> yeah i think it comes yeah. down to you you have to be open to like uh talk to them and just be a friendly yeah, guy or, just just be a normal friendly guy and yeah, you, you, will, you have to be, you have to, you have to be you sort of have to be the catalyst for you know your own inclusion yeah yeah like or you be uh, just keeping contact and if you're far away from them that's another way of like breaking the barrier in the initial thing when you meet the person yeah like i had a similar uh, experience when i uh internshiped at dtb in kenya and i thought it was going to yeah. be it was going to be two months of awkwardness i'll just be doing my work and everyone doing their own thing but then people who work there are super friendly man I got some good friends in like 5 days they showed me the ropes uh one guy uh, called Jafet we would talk about hitting up the clubs as like yo how's your saturday <laughs> night bro i was like oh it was okay how's yours like hey nimanda club you know <laughs> <laughs> and i was like god damn and then you start realizing everyone to an extent not everyone but most people are are friendly if you're good to them if you treat them with respect uh you you will most likely get the same thing back but i'm i'm definitely not saying that that that, that they're not friendly and all that uh yeah yeah of course all i'm saying is you know m- members of the indian community so sort of have they have a, you know we have a barrier with you know the the rest of the kenyan people and mm-hmm. uh well it's it's something uh, however the situation and adapt that I feel like the the Indian community itself has to sort of, you know, fight 
to be seen as uh, one of their own. Mm -hmm. I guess it's just uh, one of those things that I, I guess uh, hopefully will, you know, we can bring about generationally yeah, to our different ideologies. Right Probably now, from uh, this generation or our generation or next generation onwards. So. Yeah, because right now you don't you don't see a lot of that. Because if you take Langata as an example, literally a gated community for for idiots, right? Yeah. So yeah, stuff like that. It it, it takes it takes uh, more open minds to change that. But then, if you think about alienation, how I want to know like. The great equalizer between us three is that we're in Canada. Do you still feel like that in Canada? Because I personally, I feel like Canada is quite welcoming. So I don't, I didn't feel that alienation when I came to Canada at all, to be honest. I feel because there are a lot of international students too, right? So that kind of helps. Of uh, um, it's not first time just seeing international students, like you're a lot of international students and you mingle with international students and then you meet the seniors or first years or something. So yeah. Not even like about, well, I guess to an extent about the people, but just the place I would say in also general. a large part of, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, generally more, I would say unconditionally welcoming uh, and yes. you know, just, just being on, on campus where you get to experience, uh, you know, uh, different cultures you get to meet people from different countries in yeah. you know a level of diversity that you wouldn't have maybe back home yeah so when i came to canada i got the impression that i can live here you know but then when i go back to india i don't get that same impression it's like i'm like i i wouldn't want to live here you know <laughs> yeah you you feel out of place i well, I, I, I bet most most of that also just comes down to, you know, the language barrier. Mm -hmm. And also the area of interest. Maybe the, the, the economic the, development too. Yeah, the, I mean, India is developing in a way, but I'm playing the areas of interest, like where you're interested to live, like the, you know, the community or like how it is or something like that. Yeah. So you're gonna settle in Canada, Ashu? What do you think? Uh, maybe you know it's it's likely. It's likely. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, we have done close to an hour. I think we can wrap it up. Yeah. It's pretty informational. Learned a lot about black holes. Oh, by the way, shout out to Ashwani who said that I should give a shout out on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ashwan, if you're listening, there's your shout out. Any other shout outs you want to make? Any last words? Oh, the movie, the movie. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Your, your movie. Oh, yes, the movie. Well, I'm going to count on you to edit this because you're going to have a, like a long moment of silence. So I guess you two carry on talking and uh, <laughs> I'm going to think, well, it would have to be particularly for this year or... Fuck it, any movie, bro. <laughs> hmm. And your whole your whole reputation of recommendations lies on this movie. <laughs> so <laughs> the there's too much pressure. Here. Who who am I recommending this for? Is it a general audience or a general audience? An of, audience who's of like probably brown guys like me i uh, or probably like people who wants to try new genre or something so you don't know right okay new genre if you want something that that sort of just fills an atmosphere of mystery uh the stalker by andre tarkovsky which is quite long and you know that that might be off putting to some people, but how how long that's, is it? That's something to look into. About I don't know three hours thirty minutes. Oh, that is standard Bollywood movie time. So yeah, but you know there's no songs that you fast forward through. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, songs, man. Yeah. So what's the movie called again? Stalker. Um, Stalker. 
stalker. If I was you, bro, I would have yeah, recommended uh, the room. <laughs> absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> Fucking what? Troll, um, troll everybody. Go watch the room. Greatest movie all time. Oh, it's a it's a nineteen seventy nine movie, right? Yep, yeah, that's the one. Oh, there's yeah. also a movie if you haven't watched it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's uh, it's a movie that that does situational drama very well. Where it it's not I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily plot driven, but it, it's situationally driven. Where it places you in certain situations as an audience member through the character. I think I watched the, cl- the Kleine East. One of the East films that does that incredibly well. Yes. Kleine East for the I want. Is it a western? Yeah. yeah. Cow- cowboy, um, more like a spaghetti western type of movie, something. The quintessential spaghetti western, some people would say. So yeah. you're kind of a cinephile, right, Ashu? Ah. Uh, I mean, I'd like to call myself about that, but I haven't seen every obscure film in the Criterion Collection, so don't ask me on that. <laughs> All right. What about uh, Twelve Angry Men? Great movie, right? Uh, yeah, that's that's a great film. Uh, you know, there's so much to learn there, and just dialogue and staging, and just having a film contained within you know a single room, and just having people talk and yeah. have that be entertaining. Fucking amazing. Um, I don't, before Those we go, are I great know. list. Tom and you, okay, you, say, you, you say a movie. Like my, my movies are crap. I like, I like this movie. This, I think it's a Malayalam movie, but it came, it's coming for Oscars. It's called Jali Kat. I, I don't think it's everyone's type of movie. It's like, um, I heard it's a really weird movie um, or something. Yeah, it's about it's about this um, cow like you know attacking this village or something. And then during the the situation arises, how are you gonna like find it like to diffuse the situation stuff like that. A cow so attacks it, a village. Yeah, and it's, it's just it's just it's in- entertaining though. Like it's just a lot of like murders going on in, during that plot. So since when do cows attack villages? Bro, angry bulls, bro. Bulls probably. Oh, be like. bulls. Okay, bulls I could get. Was there ever a time in Langata when a fucking buffalo jumped into the... In, over the fence? Uh, uh, it was one or two. So, you know, I was just walking with my dad at night, just, you know, getting out of the house to get some steps in, I guess, for the watch or whatever. <laughs> so, we're walking, you know, there's a lot of benches. People are just chilling in their flip flops and sandals and stuff. So they sit down. They take them off. They're swinging their legs and so on. Yeah, but at classic. some point, you just see a bunch of people running backwards, well, back from wherever we're going, and they're running barefoot. You look forward. You look down there. The slippers are all down there at the at the bench. You're like, what's going on? We keep walking down there. It's a security guard at the end of the thing, and it turns out there's a buffalo. So we just turned right around and just went back home because you don't want to agitate a wild buffalo. <laughs> yeah, for those of you wondering, uh, where we used to live was called Langata, and it was right next to a national park. So it's literally national park, fence, fence, and then where we used to live. So fucking buffalo hops the fence. <laughs> and I, I don't think it hopped the fence. I think the fence yeah, was turned off or something. It's the same oh, situation. Is it? Yeah, the movie is the same situation yeah. where this guy tries to uh, find the because okay, in that the plot is where um, this the plot is where everyone loves meat and you know like uh, and stuff. So they try to kill the bull. The bull escapes. So everyone is at night trying to find the bull and stuff like that. And then someone takes a credit for it. But it's an interesting story, like, it goes on that. So, yeah. I once encountered a buffalo uh, mm-hmm. right next to the fence. That's the, the one, the first fence that's closest to us. Right there. Right. Did you wear red trousers? I was, I think I was going back home, I think, yeah. from your house, I'm not sure. I was just going back home late at night. And then I see this buffalo there, and I'm like, holy shit, it's so close to me. 
I start walking towards it, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, this thing just goes. <laughs> I get so fucking scared. I'm like, "Fuck this! I'm out of here." <laughs> yeah, if yeah. you wore a red trousers, man, we are done. There's also a, a python out there for for a while, for a few months. That oh, yeah. uh, there's that sort of drain that's right at the side of the fence. Even though at some point uh, KWS uh, rangers came in and moved the python back into the park, he just moved back out. Mm -hmm. I think people are concerned he's going to eat the children or something. He was growing just longer and longer by the day. So, Dude, I don't know. It was, it's just terrifying. a weird thing. Can you imagine being eaten Wait, by it's a, a it's snake? It's just so cool. What? Python, Get eaten by right? a snake? No, I, I would just say it's it's just such a it's just such a it's just such a metal thing. It's you know it's all it's also just ironic because uh, you know a lot of people meet you. Oh, you're from Africa. You know you must have lions and stuff running around. We do. And then turns out, <laughs> yeah, we do. Park. At some point, they escape the national park, and then I see lions on Snapchat, and I'm like, okay. And then, <laughs> and we oh, have fuck. pythons and buffaloes right next to the house, baboons. Like just stealing stuff from you, the from the so you know scary, veg, vegetable vendors. <laughs> or like I know I find uh, baboons are like I think some um something with M the mon it's not the mandrels. What mandrels are mandrels M A N D R. Oh, mandrels, yeah. Mandrels. Yeah, they're they're very scary monkeys, man. Monkeys will fucking baboons, man. The, what if the a baboon just rips your nuts off? That would be insane. Yeah, they're known for ripping off appendages. I think they go for your finger or something first. Your Can you imagine a baboon just yeah. having a death grip on your balls and then... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know what would be Only, amazing? I've, I've, been, I've been really interested in just sort of animal intelligence. Just how did we come out on top? It's just, it's just one of those things I asked the twins are deep and one deep. Just because... The thing medicine, I guess they know something about evolution. Ah, it's just one of those things that happened to be that way. But do you know uh, baby monkeys and child, like human child, kind of have the same perspective in thinking and responses, emotional responses, with things like, because when they at the baby monkeys, they usually feed uh, with a bottle of milk, right? The same response like when a child baby also have. So it's like I was studying about these, so it's gonna. Interesting. Well, let's go back to bo monkeys ripping balls off. <laughs> oh, you can do that by yourself. Uh, <laughs> What's yeah. the worst way to die by an animal? A another animal. What do you think? What would you say? Bear. Okay. Okay. Interesting. It can happen in Canada, bro. He's like, you're dying, you're just dying, so. Hmm? I don't know. I, I would say, well, you know, there's, I don't know, some insect that uh, I think goes through its, uh, you know, transformation. What's, what do you call the process where, you know, the larva, pupae, whatever that is, it uh, just stays inside your skull and eats at your brain or something like that. Oh, yes, or maybe, cool. or maybe the parasite, like instead of paras <laughs> oh parasite, parasite that goes into the skin, infect the whole <laughs> body, and then your legs will have those um, sores or like you know open craters or something like that, because it eats your, eats your skin, right? And you you slide, uh, you die slowly because of that. Fuck man, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's a really big dick energy move if a baboon's ripping off your balls? You simultaneously grab the baboon's balls and you don't let them go until it lets yours go. What is your fascination with this? I was just thinking about like a like, movie scene. It's, like, it's so off color from the rest of the podcast, you man. Fast. We're talking about uh, apples and then. It Fuck it, bro. We can talk monkeys. about anything. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine Libin grabbing Baboon's balls and, like, Baboon grabbing yeah. his balls. But, like, you first. Yeah, let, no, let, me, you let first. me just say first, that's not going to happen. Those things are incredibly fast and they have incredible strength. 
Yeah. Like we're, we're sitting around most of our lives staring at computer screens. These guys are swinging around and fighting for survival. So unless there are thousands you have no there's a different there's a different story. <laughs> there are some people in the Congo so who who still live like that. They literally swing in the jungle <laughs> running around hunting and they're strong as fuck. See see that's that's what people evolved to do. We we evolved to you know hunt yeah, I mean, animals on the on the plains of Africa. We weren't supposed to be doing all of this stuff with being there. <laughs> like see the, the people over there right who do those stuff they adapted to the environment and so they're physically strong but people like us doing that right now I don't think we'll fall off from the tree bro easily. Well not you Tom and you're a resident Spider-Man so yeah uh, thank no. you <laughs> thanks for the powers. <laughs> um all right all right good talk <laughs> thank you thank you everyone for listening to the morning chaya show subscribe do you have any you questions no questions this week oh okay awesome if you have any questions what do you mean a question this week how do you know how questions this week we have a form where people can ask us questions but no one wants to ask us questions apparently okay then ask some old questions i think i got like 20 minutes Okay. Old questions. Uh What old questions did we get? What's interesting? It is very uh, we got different like different types of questions. No, nothing obscene. Nothing, you know. I think 80% is that. My parents my watches. <laughs> um Oh wait, your parents are going to watch this? Why did you let yeah. me talk about monkey balls? Oh my god. I have been tell we we've, we've both been telling you it's so off color for. <laughs> well, I think your dad anyway, will up, will appreciate the humor. Your dad is a pretty awesome dude, so. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah, they both will, so. I remember sitting in your pickup truck, your dad, me yeah. in the middle. Uh yeah. Rosie you in the middle or it was me in the middle. And then yeah, it was me in the middle. <laughs> so the stick shift was right in the middle of my leg. No, I think it was you. Yeah. yeah, and then your dad kept making dick jokes about the stick shift being in the middle of my legs. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, your dad is the best man. Yeah. Hey, how's That's how's funny. your uh, little brother uh, Hirsch doing? Man, he's fifteen years old. Can you believe that? Uh, I remember walking home one day, and you know. It was the first day he came at home using the crib. I'm like, "Is that the baby?" And then I went to check him out, and he's 15 years old. Wow, it's high flies. Is he following in the Ashtosh footsteps? Is he a smart cookie? I mean, he is. I I, I don't know. He's maybe disinterested. He's smart as hell, man. Mm-hmm. He told me to coach him in accounting. I forgot all of that. I had to coach myself first. Okay. And then he got he you were solving balance sheets in like 5 minutes. I was like, "Man, I couldn't do that." <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think um so you're good in physics and he's good in accounting, so that's nice. I I mean, it's just what are those things? I I don't know. I would say he's particularly interested in accounting. He's just good at it. Honestly, I didn't do too well in physics in high school. I guess at the start because he is more about memorizing useless stuff. Mhm. And it was such a terrible way to learn. Mhm. Remember economics, it was just like list 10 factors that affect supply and demand it's like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I can't, I hate memorizing. I like uh, logical reasoning and practical like working it out. Remember fucking hypotenuse. I was so disinterested in Oh, hypotenuse. Hypotenuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All this memorizing. Uh, the, the people that are listening to the podcast have no idea what we're talking about. Oh my god. <laughs> hypotenuse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, you know, Shem Shem McCurry writing proper explanation with uh, Doctor handwriting, and we both thought it said poo poo explosion. So. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I remember yeah. that fucking poo poo explosion, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> that was insane. Oh man. 
Yo, remember Science Congress? That was that was a fun. Time. And that was that was I was so disinterested from just year year seven to ten. Whatever happened there, I just really didn't care academically. I just phoned it in academically. No, I had we a lot had of fun, fun on the though. Side. We had fun though. You got you got a bit. We had an, an immense amount of fun. I think the last year was the most fun. Uh, year eleven. Just, just because they yeah they no year ten. Oh, well, in ten. terms of, but I think in terms of sheer fun in in high school it had to be year 11 because we you know we finished the syllabus the teachers would just come in yeah do this exercise <laughs> we'd maybe do the exercise we just phone it in just chilling at the back eating food whatever in the in the bar does, yo. In the bar does. Oh, that, that was during revision time though i'm just talking about just like general class time that was, that was well good times man huh? Let us cherish the memories of the past. All right. Man, some of those people have gone on radio silence. They're barely talking in the group chat. I'm calling them out on the podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you come at me when I try and ask fucking interesting questions. Google it. No, man, you ask questions that you should Google because none of us know whether chewing gum helps footballers perform better. What kind and, of question and is then, that? And then I ask questions to Libin and he says, Google it. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then he gets mad. I don't know. There's, there's questions to ask in the group chat that are general curiosity. And then there's just questions that we don't know anything about. We're going to Google it. That's the first thing we're going to do. So why don't you just do it for yourself? You know. Well, I guess you have to take that risk. You know, you can't just make the assumption someone would know. Um, well, what are the odds that a group of people working in, I don't know, medicine, physics, and business would know about, <laughs> you know, the psychology of football, of, uh, I don't know, football is chewing gum during a match. It's Look, like, come on, fifty percent of people <laughs> in that group play football. All right, so I thought they could relate to that sentiment. Oh yeah, they've done massive studies on the on the subject and found huge correlations between chewing gum and performance. Yeah. Like yeah, they had a huge control group. And, come on, man. I don't know. I think I think maybe like when you chew gum, you think faster. So I don't know. I feel like it just calms you down yeah. or something. I don't know. Some of these studies, just, you know, they just seem so so superfluous. Like. I don't know, they just pick random things so like, hey, we need funding and we need to publish something. So let's just throw something out there. I don't know how the process works, but. Dude, that, that thing is so weird. <laughs> and, and, and those are the things that popular magazines pick up on. And that's the thing everyone shares. And I don't know, Facebook or whatever. And it's usually some journalists who misinterpret whatever was there. And that's why, I don't know. On, on Monday, wine is good for you, and on Friday, it's really detrimental to your health, and you should you should have stopped drinking it five years ago. I don't know. And they get they get like masters and like PhDs based off of those research. I don't think th no. I, I suppose it is. <laughs> one of the, so. one of the no, I I think that's that's just the part that's popularized. Well, one of the craziest instances. Uh, I heard of of someone getting a master's and it really shows how this kind of progressive woke culture is really taking over is where this guy literally rewrote Mein Kampf Adolf Hitler's fucking book and changed every word that said Jew or referred to the Jews or uh, one of those uh, people that Hitler was against with, with the. Well, also, I wouldn't take it to be. You know, I would. I wouldn't take it to be that clear cut in terms of the work you did. You have to take a much closer look. Maybe it's more nuanced mm. than what maybe somebody else reported it to be. So, you know, I I wouldn't be one to sort of, you know, slander someone's academic work if I. No, no, no. He did it. He did it. And... He did it as a troll to show that you can literally, literally write a paper 
and if it fits the narrative of right. like the progressive left, uh, it'll get passed. And he got he actually <laughs> it actually got passed, <laughs> and it was literally main camp. But whatever it said, Jewish instead of Jew, it said like uh, the white male well, or the patriarch patriarch or something like that. <laughs> well, then <laughs> again, I I don't buy into into that whole thing. I think it's just. It's overblown. It's it's a few. I I think it's just a few people on both sides that are sort of saying that you know there is a progressive left or there is mm. an you know extreme right. You know again you you have to open a dialogue with people and you know you realize you have more commonality than differences. And again, when it comes to something being passed, you know there's so many journals. These these bogus journals and. Uh, you know these these creditable journals who have you know uh, stringent requirements and and so on. So I I wouldn't take it. I, I you know how I, I would just take that as someone trying to push a political agenda. I think all of that should stay out of the academic sphere. But it's you know, not just though. just the way they... it's not. Maybe at an individual level. Uh, it's less prominent than it seems, I guess, on social media. But institutions like universities are super heavy leaning progressive left. And it's quite clear. That You're cutting is... out. Oh, sorry. Am I good now? I don't know. I mean, I, I consider myself to be leftist. Maybe some things people think are too progressive. But then, you know, that, that again stems on on where you stand when when it comes to sort of sort of these niche topics you know it's it's not uh it's it's not a, a major lived experience of of most people in their day-to-day -day lives and you know i i think it's 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 an emerging field so of course it's going to be polarizing so i think uh, all all we have to do is you know, so, sort of wait and you know take time to listen to both sides. I I, I don't think uh, it's it's an issue of sort of labeling one side as another, or you know. Mm. Well, you know, I, you know, people uh, decide to put their energy into various things. I I you know, I I, I don't think personally that it's it's a valuable use use of time to. You know, debate whether one side is right or, or another, because uh, I, I think that uh, one thing we've forgotten in in recent times is is that again, like I say, you know, uh, many of us uh, w want the same things, and you know, seeing seeing someone as uh, another or another group uh, just brings in more division. At, you know, at a time where we should be more united to stand against. Uh, you know the the problems on a larger scale. Uh, many of these things, uh, I I feel, are sort of to you know distract or cover up from the detrimental things that are happening on on both sides of of the coin. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. Regardless of uh, what it is, you know, it's 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 one side of a coin. Um, I, I think most people definitely do uh, realize that. I, I I also do think that uh, social media and uh, you know, however, uh, they they push the content to you is targeted towards having, you know, more popularity, so you know they can get more ad revenue. So yeah, regardless of what content is 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 being presented, as long as they get more engagement, more clicks, more views. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so you're, you're, you're more likely to, to be presented with uh, things that are in your own echo chamber or, or things that are incredibly controversial. Yeah, on that topic. So, I... so at the end of the day, it, 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 it comes to sort of, uh, you know, uh, making up your own mind on, on these things. And, you know, sooner or later, you, you, you realize that I think the best way to to lead with uh, to you know lead into these things is uh, with humanity. Yeah, don't let these two uh, things dominate your life. Rather, focus on yourself as an individual and how you interact with other people. How you can make uh, 
the how can how you can make life better for the people around you by just being uh, just just not being a douchebag you know just not trying to argue with everyone or for every single point based on a political motive or something like that yeah, just, yeah. E everything everything is built on you know dialogue and compromise you know yeah. uh, you know you can't always have your way and uh, you know, it's it's a part of society that you have to accept. Uh, you know, you can bring back, you can bring about real change through just dialogue. Uh, you know, the efficacy of uh, certain policies that maybe people would think against. And you know, again, there there's also many other things that fly under the radar that people have to be aware of. And you know, we, we've we've sort of uh, devolved into a, into a state where you just have, you know, demagogues, uh, you know, sort of the the ruling class uh, manipulating their their positions of power to, uh, you know, uh, work, work to towards the benefit of, of a few rather than, uh, you know, the people as a whole. So. Again, again, that that's something uh, I hope we can we can bring about generationally. I, I feel like uh, our, our generation has its heart in the right place, and we're very we, we are very um, conscious of the challenges that we face and sort of the, the hurdles that we have to overcome to uh, you know to sustain our society and to keep improving. <clears throat> Wise words from Ashutosh, and we shall use that to conclude today's podcast, even though I said that half an hour ago. Uh, but thank you, Ashosh, man. That was really that was yeah. deep. Um, yeah, uh, guys. <laughs> subscribe yeah. if you haven't. Leave a like. And see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for having me. Metro don't trust you, I'm gonna shoot you Beautiful morning, get yeah, the sun